Good day, I'm Yevi Herter and I'm your CHM first year senior tutor. We'll be starting off with practical one today, which is focused on measurements to help you take extremely accurate and precise measurements. Experiment one is a simple density determination so that we can identify metals based on their density. You will be assigned one of four unknown metals of which you need to calculate the volume and the mass thereof so that we can calculate the density. Before weighing anything, it is important to tear or zero the scale. Simply press the zero button or tear, it flashes zero and then you can place your object on the balance. Always note the mass to two decimal places as the uncertainty lies in the last figure of the mass. To determine the volume of the unknown metal pieces, we are going to submerge the whole metal piece in water. To do this, we'll place water in a graduated cylinder and place the metal piece in the water. It is important to submerge the whole metal piece underwater as we need the whole volume of the metal piece. Now that the volume and the mass of the unknown metal is determined, it's easy to calculate the density of these metals and to compare that with the known densities. Remember that density is calculated by dividing mass by the volume in SI units. So that's gram per cubic centimeter. Now for experiment two, we're gonna calculate the density of water. Once again, to do this, we need known masses and known volumes. We're gonna do this in replicates of three so that we can calculate the average and draw a graph. Since we're gonna dispense a known volume of water into the Erlenmeyer flasks, we need to know what the mass of that known volume is. However, the total mass will be made up of the mass of the beaker as well as the mass of the water. So we need to calculate or determine the mass of the empty Erlenmeyer flask prior to dispensing the known quantities of water into the Erlenmeyer flask. For accurate volume measurements, we're going to dispense known volumes, water, into an Erlenmeyer flask. The burette is filled up to a volume, it doesn't have to be zero, and we simply open the tap and dispense approximately 10 millimeters. Now that the masses of the three known volumes have been determined, it's easy to draw the graph required from you. Remember that it's a mass versus volume graph, which means that the inclination of the line would be delta y over delta x. y is the mass, x is the volume. So indirectly, it is mass divided by volume. What's the unit? Gram divided by cubic centimeter, which is the unit of density. Thus, the inclination is the density. For experiment three, we're gonna prepare and determine the density of a sodium chloride solution. To do this, approximately 30 grams of sodium chloride will be weighed off and dissolved, made up in a volumetric flask to 200 millimeters. It's important to transfer the sodium chloride crystals quantitatively to the volumetric flask. To do this, it was transferred using a funnel placed in the volumetric flask. I poured the crystals into the volumetric flask. However, some of the crystals are still left in the beaker. To transfer this as well, we will rinse the beaker with distilled water. Now the leftover crystals are in solution swirl it around and pour this into the volumetric flask. 
However, some of the crystals are on the neck of the volumetric flask and this needs to be rinsed into solution as well. Fill the flask up halfway so that there's enough water to dissolve the bulk of the solution, the bulk of the crystals. When handling a volumetric flask, it's important not to handle it by the neck as this is the weakest point in the glassware and you risk breaking it. So hold it by the bulb and swirl it around until all of the crystals are in solution. Now that the bulk of the crystals are in solution, we need to fill it up to the mark. The bottom of the meniscus needs to be exactly on the mark and then we know that there's an accurate 200 milliliters with the uncertainty in the second decimal. Now that the density of the solution has been determined in experiment 3, this can be used to determine the mass of the solution in experiment 4 by simply calculating the mass from the density formula as density equals mass divided by volume. If the volume is known and the density is known from experiment 3, it's a quite simple calculation. We're going to use the solution prepared in experiment 3 in experiment 4 by simply decanting more or less half of the solution into a 250 milliliter beaker. The solution in this beaker will then be used with a pipette so that we can transfer aliquots, that's a specific volume of the solution, into 300 milliliter beakers. A pipette is calibrated to contain a specific volume. This one's volume is 20 milliliters, so we need to fill it up exactly to the mark once again with the bottom of the meniscus touching the line. Now that all of the data for experiment 4 has been captured, you have enough to complete the PRAC report for practical one.